right, so we're back. We're talking The Last Jedi. Uh, spoilers. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Of course. I mean, who who wants to watch a non-spoiler thing right now? What do you... You didn't see the movie yet? You're... You waited this long. You're still deciding. Oh, should I go see it? Oh, what do the reviews have to say? Just go fucking see it, and uh, we're gonna be spoiling the shit out of it. Detailed analysis, bonus section. I don't know why. I guess it's just there's a lot to unpack in this movie. I'm such a huge Star Wars fan, so I had to do like three podcasts on this, and I have one of my nerdiest, closest friends to join me. Ben, welcome to the show. Ben Solo, how you doing? <laughs> yeah hey how's it going was, was that your like your mark maron star wars intro go see the fucking movie what already? the fuck motherfuckers i'm sitting here in my fucking garage you motherfuckers god damn it <laughs> yeah. luke skywalker piece of shit yeah coming in yeah. real hot uh, real hot right there ben yeah um yeah well let's uh I actually don't listen to to mark maron and and funny enough anybody who like finds out that i podcast they're always like Oh, you know, uh, do you know Mark Marin? It's usually like older adults. They're like, oh, I heard about this podcasting thing. Yeah, there's this comedian guy, Mark Marin. He's a real whippersnapper. Yeah, he's crazy. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, <laughs> all right, but we're doing we're, we're we're doing we're doing the Star Wars uh, Last Jedi spoiler review, detailed analysis breakdown. You know, we're gonna talk about the whole universe and everything. It's gonna be very very detailed. So. I didn't really talk to you too much, Ben, but you're one of my oldest and closest friends, and we have have lived a life of enjoying Star Wars together, uh, from going to see Phantom Menace and being disappointed. We've been we've been <laughs> we've been living a disappointed life together as far as Star Wars goes. Um, somewhat, somewhat, you know. There's been good moments. There's been there's been hope. There's been moments of hope, and uh, you know. I, I did like The Force Awakens, and uh, I did like this movie as well. Uh, so, so tell me, what did, what did you think? Did you like the movie? Um, I think if I had to give you like an overall thumbs up, thumbs down, like Ebert type thing, I would go thumbs up for sure. I did like a lot of the movie. Um, I, definitely, I definitely think the second half of the movie was way better. Like once Ray, once you get the, the sky, uh, Snope murder sesh, and then, like, the, the, the Ray and Kylo tag team, I think the movie just took off a lot more from there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Being, I thought, the, like, the Finn and Rose B-plot was a little was a little lame. Like, I know you, you told me you liked the, the Casino Planet. But, you know, trying to think about my thoughts about the movie, it's actually tough because there's so much crap that got kind of jammed in there, which I think is one of the biggest criticisms. Mm-hmm. Like, trying to, I've seen it twice now. So trying to break it down and, like, really, like, analyze and hone in on certain things has been difficult in my head because it, di- it did feel like a little bit of a mess I- I'll, I'll agree with people who criticize it along those lines yeah so let me tell you so when i i went and i saw the movie on the premiere night that it came out and it was exciting people were pumped people were psyched you know when when the opening crawl came on was there was great. cheering you know and um and and so when the movie ended after my first viewing i was like exhausted like i i was like i just sat there in my seat like i didn't immediately go oh yeah i love this movie this was great you know like the force awakens with jj abrams directing it left you wanting more it was a perfectly court like it was a perfect tight like three act structure movie bing bang boom you know keep it safe keep it kind of like a new hope a little bit in the similar structure and it was it it was perfect way to reintroduce the franchise and the new characters and it left you wanting more i mean it was probably the best ending of any star wars movie ever you know it was like that cliffhanger i mean that was that was amazing and this movie just left me like feeling worn out and and like drained and overwhelmed and exhausted at the end of the first showing um, <clears throat> I really liked the ending though of the movie. I, I mean, I, I can understand what you're saying. No, I like uh, I, I like the really, ending too. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because I I feel like a lot of stuff like happened. It, the pace was very high. A lot of you know little MacGuffin type goals. It's like we gotta like you know find this guy to do this box and like get that thing. And Dino Del Toro's here. I don't know why the fuck he's here and yeah, all this type and of why, shit. And and, and, the, and why does he have a lisp? Like what what is that? Like why? And he's, and he's, so basically, they had to just make you know, kind of offend someone somehow yeah. in Star Wars. It wouldn't be right. It wouldn't be Star Wars if you don't kind of offend someone in like a subtle way. Yeah. But um, yeah. But 
I mean, it was exhausting because you know it was kind of emotional. I was emo when Luke Skywalker died. You know, I felt I felt it. You know, I was I was in that moment pretty sad, and but I liked the ending though. The, I I really liked ending with that anonymous kid. I thought Ryan Johnson did an interesting thing there where it seems like the central theme of the movie was like anyone can be a hero. You don't have to be a, like a Skywalker, you know, elite, <laughs> you know, you know, liberal coastal elite. So there you go. Um, right, right. You don't have to be that person. The force can come from anywhere. And that's obviously the idea with Don Ray's parents being not, not special. Right. Um, but I don't, I don't blame him. You know, you, you probably like force awakens felt super familiar too, though. I mean, it was comfortable. It was yeah. the same movie. We all know it was the same movie as a new hope. And this one, they tried to do it differently. And I guess some people appreciate that. Some people don't. But if you think about what, what choice did Ryan Johnson have? I mean, JJ left him with like, okay, here's this setup. It's pretty much the same thing. Now try to do something new with it. He kind of screwed him there, I think. Yeah, yeah, a, l a little bit. But because, you know, like, J but JJ did leave a lot of things hanging. I know that um, a lot of the, a lot of people have complaints about this movie. It's probably one of the most divisive Star Wars movies ever. You know, I mean, the, the critic score versus the, the, um, the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes is like, you know, it's like drastically different, like 38 points different. Actually, the audience score for The Last Jedi is the lowest score out of all the Star Wars movies, lower than The Phantom Menace currently. At, it's at 55% from the audience. Uh, I know I, I, I know it is. People are crazy. And I know a lot of people are thinking like that. I think there's like bots out there. There's like a vocal minority of people that are like, you know, trying to like really, you know, feel who feel passionately about this movie because. The main, the major complaints have been that uh, they didn't like the way that Luke was treated. Um, they didn't like the way Snoke was treated. They didn't like the fact Snoke died so quickly, and we never got to find out who Snoke was. And they didn't like how Ray's like parents were nobody. But see, I I liked all those things. Uh, not so much. I wasn't so crazy about the the Luke choice from up up at top, but. Um, but yeah, maybe we should start from the top because we're talking we're kind of talking about the end and we're talking about stuff. But uh but just real quickly, I'll finish up that thought about uh The Force Awakens. Force Awakens did kind of leave a lot of like mystery, like who is this girl, you know? What girl, you know? Like you know, if if what you say about this girl is true, bring her like there was a lot of like who is she? What is she? Han Solo kind of looks at her weird, you know, like Leia kind of looks at her weird and they have a talk and then they send they send her to go find Luke. Like why do they send her, you know? Like just cuz she's you know, has the force like so there was a lot of hanging questions that uh, that for the past two years there was like a lot of people speculating online and now you know maybe this is a, the detriment of the internet or whatever with like online speculators and theories because there's theory crafters all over youtube going you know who's snoke is he darth plagueis is he is you know who's ray's parents is she a kenobi she has an english accent maybe she's a kenobi maybe she's a palpatine look at her fighting style i mean i watched a lot of these videos and it was like pretty convincing it was fun it's i i've you know one of the most fun parts about star wars is the theorizing is getting caught up in this universe because it's one of the most fun universes to play in outside of our own reality you know star wars i i really like uh it's it's probably my favorite universe you know to 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 be lost in to get involved in um so you're, you're huh? an intergalactic truth you're an intergalactic truther yeah 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 i mean yeah uh, the, the death star was an inside job <laughs> yeah it's, it's like loose, loose credit another documentary out there <laughs> yeah loo, loo, loose loose uh loose loose republic credits um yeah but yeah so okay so let's 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 take it from the do you have anything to add about the connection to the force awakens and the and jj abrams versus ryan johnson before we move on to taking it from the top yeah for, from my understanding what i've read there there wasn't like a master plan for this trilogy uh so basically if what Ryan Johnson says is true is he, he started writing this one when force awakens was still, I think a script or even before, way before it ever came out. And they're like, all right, well, you know, how are you going to take this? And there wasn't like a master arc, like the Marvel cinematic universe. You can see there's like a master plan between all these different types of movies phases. So yeah, the phases and you know, they all link up together. There has to be some, you know, master genius behind the scenes. Make, arcing out this whole thing on a huge giant like marvel board somewhere yeah but apparently this trilogy is not like that and if you think about what ryan johnson was given 
this new movie, which is like a very, very similar setup to the original, like what, what's he going to do with that? Is yeah. he just going to do the exact same crap over again with like the Emperor, you know, his Snoke, Vader, Kyle Ren, you know, the, the, the obvious analogies? Like, is he going to do that? No. So he went the complete opposite direction and basically said that's all a bunch of bullshit. So, yeah. I mean, what choice did he have? I think the, the original decision to basically set up the same Empire Rebellion dynamic in the new trilogy was, was poor. Why it didn't have to be that way. No one said it had to be that way. They could have had a very more interesting political landscape. Right. Um, you know, model their other fallen empires. So, you know, like when the Soviet Union fell, there was a bunch of like warring factions and gangsters, all sorts of crazy shit. It, they didn't have to go that way. So I just think judging if you have any problems with the force of the last Jedi, I think some of the blame may really lay with JJ and like the original decisions. Oh, good good point. And a point that I have not really heard so much, but that's a good point because you know, uh, people it's it's strange, right? It's it's like when you, the fans are never going to get what the, exactly what they want. They're just never going to get. If you think about it, all the, you know, when I started this podcast, I talked about our disappointment with, you know, the Phantom Menace, but it was like you know, I wasn't like totally crushed by the Phantom Menace because we were still kids when that came out. So I, I still kind, you know, I probably liked it more than the adults who saw the original trilogy when they were kids. So you know that that being said, it's like the fans are never going to get exactly what they want because let's you know, Star Wars is a global merchandising behemoth. You know what I mean? It's 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 a global monster, and it's trying to appeal to a whole audience of people you know the young the old you know the asian the gay the black the straight you know the the dykes i don't know can you say dykes yeah fine why not um <laughs> the everyone you know the the so so it's like you know it's this big thing and it, you know what like what's disney gonna do like like have a contest and bring in like the top 10 star wars nerds like biggest fans to help write the script with like jj abrams or something like you know no because then you know people it's just that's not gonna work out it's not gonna go that way so i think jj abrams jj abrams played it safe and maybe he did kind of give ryan johnson like no other choice but i did i i gotta say i i i do i did like the direction that that ryan johnson chose uh, to go in, with the exception of a few things, and we'll and we'll get into that. You were going to say something. Yeah, well, I mean, if Disney had any balls, they would just retcon the entire prequel trilogy. I'd be in for that. I'd be down for that. Oh yeah, I would be first. That'd be sick. Yeah, let's just redo the entire thing. Like none of that's a little kid bullshit. Get get a real actor to play Anakin Skywalker. You know, you know. Also, if you want to do another standalone movie like The Rise of Vader, we should talk about our like if we were in control, our ultimate wishes for like the entire series or universe. Oh, I think yeah. that would be up there. For, yeah, yeah. Just like Vader being Vader, because that ten seconds in Rogue One is like one of the best moments in Star Wars history. It was just him killing people. That so, was really sick. Yeah, yeah. Rogue One is great, by the way. I just rewatched it. I I, I love Rogue One now a lot more than I did. But yeah, okay. So it's. Yes, I agree with everything you just said. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, cool. So this movie opens up, and the crawl is great. You know, it's a great crawl. It's like, here's what's happening. This is the deal. The First Order's coming. The Resistance has, you know, is trying to evacuate, and we're in. And I love the opening shot. Ryan Johnson pans down and goes straight into the ships that are coming off the planet. That was really fucking cool. Um, so I, I liked what he did with that. And then, the so... I pretty much have no problems with the whole opening sequence, except for I, I was just thinking about this. Like I let that whole opening sequence was awesome, and I love that Captain Kennedy guy of the first order. He's like, "Fire on the base, on the cruisers, more wine." <laughs> you know, he was just like that, like that, that first order captain guy. He was, he was badass. I wanted to see more like first order captain kind of people like that. I really like kind of how like Empire showed you that. I really like the. I mean, they're sure. kind of making fun of. They're making fun of like the Empire admirals who were like, "Attack!" Ya, blah blah blah. I mean, it, it was a little bit of like a tongue-in-cheek version of that. Well, yeah, sure. I mean, well, when when it opens up with the joking, like I've seen a lot of people who are upset, they're like, "Oh, this isn't the." They started the, the tone was all wrong with Poe joking, and it's like, well, look, in the beginning of the Force Awakens, Poe gets you know, Poe's kind of like the sort of like the Han Solo of this of this trilogy. And in the in the beginning of the Force Awakens, when Kylo Ren kneels him down in front of him, and he and he's there's like that pause, and he goes, "Who talks first? I talk first. You talk first. Like he is 
a funny kind of character. He has, you know, and then the Admiral says, I believe he's tooling with you, sir. So I didn't have a problem with that. Did you have a problem with that? Um, the humor? You know, it felt, you know, I, I, I like we talked about Force Awakens, who talked first, I talked first, that bit, I think that worked, I think that was the proper amount, the proper tone, like a, like a three escalation, like, who is this thing, I thought it actually was a little much. Yeah, it kind of, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the part that I thought was a little much, because Poe is trying to stall, so he's purposely up there fucking with them, and I think humor, I, I talked about this already in, a, in another one, so I'm not going to go too much into it, but Humor is a good way to subvert tyrannical authority, you know, because these guys have big egos. So when you start making fun of them, they don't get it. You know, it's like making fun of like Kramer. He's like, hey, what are you talking about? Like, eh, you know, <laughs> like he doesn't understand the joke because he's, he's like robotic. He doesn't like get the joke. But um, Wait, do you, the Mike, the Mike Adelic audience know who you're talking about? No, nah, they don't have to know. It's just a person. You know, everyone has a friend who like doesn't get jokes. So you, you can you can imagine. But um. But yeah, so, so, but yeah, I, I didn't like when Hux was like, can he hear me? He can? Like, that was where I think they went too far, getting Hux in on the, on the humor a little bit. I didn't really care for that. I didn't think that was a good choice. But anyway, I like the whole battle scene. The only problem I have is, okay, we just talked about this. The Force Awakens ends with a climax, like, you know, the, just one of the best cliffhangers, one of the best moments ever. Let's start with that. And so this is what I think, and I'll see, I want to see if you agree with me on this. I think Ryan Johnson made a conscious effort to not make this, you know, like Empire Strikes Back was a very personal movie. You know, it was a very like tight knit, like just the main character movie, not the whole war, you know, thing, resistance, rebellion. So th this movie was made, a, made an effort to make the resistance, the rebellion, a focal point of the movie. And Ryan, I, you know, Ryan Johnson made that choice by deciding to open the movie with that whole bombing sequence and, and Paige, Rose's sister with the, you know, with the necklace and clinging on to it and the sacrifice for the greater good, rather than focus on the main fucking characters, Luke Skywalker and Rey. Like, that's what we want to see. That's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see them open and crawl, pan down, and the Millennium Falcon just shoot uh, you know, out. And then it, we see it come into Ock 2, maybe from Luke's perspective. And, and then you know, we, we'll pick up where we left off. That's kind of, I think if you're starting this movie, you start with your main character. Yes? No? Well, I mean, an opening like random action set piece is kind of a Star Wars staple, right? You know, like, or not like, just like an opening set piece that doesn't always necessarily involve the rest of the movie. You know, like Return of the Jedi, you have the whole Jabba situation. Uh, you have Hoth and Empire. I know that's like Luke starts that movie. I guess that's a little, a little bit more what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, I have to admit, I you you remember more more details of this movie than I do, but um. I felt bored a lot in that opening set piece, to be honest. Hmm. I didn't really care. Maybe, maybe, maybe the reason is the exact reason you're saying right now is because it didn't have anything to do with the, the part of the story I was emotionally connected to. I didn't really give a shit what was going on there. I wasn't impressed with, you know, the whole battle on a, on a visual level, I guess. And it just felt, it kind of felt like the beginning of episode three, where they had that whole attack on um, Dooku. And that, right. whole bullet, and that whole thing, which was just kind of like... It was the same music. It. it was the same music. Ryan Johnson went in, he did the... Dun, 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 or whatever that, you know, it was the same kind of style of music, yeah. Reven you know, the, Revenge of the Sith. With the thing, action set pieces, and these these are in all sorts of movies. Like, James Bond movies always start with, like, a, a self-contained action set piece. You know nothing super bad's gonna happen, because right. it's the beginning of the movie. Right. Right? There's not gonna be nothing with serious consequences, so... I don't know. I, I was kind of bored in that in that whole piece, and also I, I'm starting to question the need of the the idea of Poe Dameron. To be honest with you, like, why is he here? What's he really serving in the story? Where is he going to end up? Inside of Ray. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we did kind of get that at the end there. They did give it to their eyes, like they're gonna, you know. Well, yeah, it, it is weird, right? It's like I, like the first one, I think, because he was supposed to die. The original script of The Force Awakens, he was supposed to die in the crash. But then they were like, oh, we're going to just use this character or whatever. But like, I don't know. It was weird. It's, it is weird. I, I, that At the end of The Last Jedi, he goes, 
He goes up to Ray and he goes, "Hi, I'm Poe." Wait, wait, what do you? They didn't fucking meet. Like when she, she's, she's like fucking fought Kylo Ren and then they came back and she went to go find Luke Skywalker. They never fucking met. Like, hey, I'm the hotshot pilot and you're the fucking Jedi. Like, what's up? They didn't meet in the Force Awakens. Like, what, what the hell was that? That's was, that was weird. Did she go straight to that island? No, she came back to the Resistance base. Remember, she like said goodbye to Finn, like I oh see you again. Then she like hugged Princess Leia, and then they all waved her goodbye, and like they were like goodbye, good luck. So that was kind of that was kind of weird. It it seemed weird. He was like, "Hi, I'm Poe." It's like like and then people are like, "Oh, just because he introduced himself to Ray, that means that he's they're gonna like bang or whatever. They're gonna be a couple or a romance or something." I don't really know what like what's interesting about that. Like, what the fuck's interesting about that? It, yeah, you're right. There's nothing really interesting about Poe. Like, he's just. I, and that 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 brings me to a, another huge problem with I had with this movie was that uh, storyline, the Admiral Holdo that comes in and takes over for Leia, who was you know doing a fucking her best Mary Poppins impression, you know, floating out in space. Oh, that was so dumb. Oh my, Sorry, that was crazy. God. That was crazy. I hated that. I thought that was the worst. That might have been the worst part of the movie. Like. I thought she was going to die there, and that would have been fine because we all know that you know she's not coming back anyway. But that was so lame. I'm sorry. So yeah, what was your biggest problem with that? Just that it was cheesy. Well, first of all, I mean, I know Star Wars isn't science fiction, but they kind of just ignore the rules of space a little too much sometimes. Physics. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, uh, there's this clearly like a sense of gravity in these like space battles, and also the sound is you know there's no sound in space, but whatever. That's another a whole other issue with George Lucas. Well, we it is. It, yeah, it's a long time ago. Maybe there was more gravity back then. Yeah, that's it. Def. But um. Yeah, that was just cheesy. I'm sorry. That was just that was just lame. It was. Yeah, it was kind of cringy. Right? Like, I was kind of like, ugh, what are they doing? This is weird. This, there were moments in this movie that were so not Star Wars. You know, it was like, what is going on? This is so not Star Wars. Um, but th th I know a lot of fans had a problem with this because they're like, Leia, Leia doesn't use the Force. She This is the first time she uses the Force. Like, this is bullshit. But I actually watched Return of the Jedi recently. And in Return of the Jedi, Luke, when he tells Leia, I'm, you know, I'm your brother, you're my sister. He says, "You." She's like, "You have this power. I could never. I don't understand." And he goes, "You don't." He's a, he says, "You'll learn to use it like I have. In time, you'll gain with power and in strength, and you'll learn to use it like me." He says that in Return of the Jedi. So it's interesting. There's a lot of things that connect in the in these in the other movies. Like a lot of things that fans got upset with in this movie. If you go back and you look at some of the things the characters have said in the other movies, that it really does kind of connect. And, um, yeah, so that was, that was weird. And okay. So Leia's in space, <laughs> like, you know, floating in space and that was cheesy. She comes back to the ship. Okay. They get they, they fucking get her on life support. Now, why did they choose to kill Admiral Akbar and bring in, you know, purple haired Laura Dern? Like what, I, what was the purpose of her character? Like, I just didn't understand. Why couldn't they just have Admiral Akbar live? And be like, hey, you guys remember Admiral Akbar? Like, he'll he's gonna take over. You know, that's 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 what we're gonna do because we actually care he, about him. To, was he supposed to be like the, the second in in line? Did they say that? Yeah, they said they they said the bridge was destroyed. All of our leadership is gone. Admiral Akbar is dead, and Princess Leia is recovering. So the next in line is Admiral Holdo, and they're all like, who? Like, who is this person? Like, she's just like, like so out of place. She's like wearing like a purple gown. Like everybody else is dressed in like military fatigues. It just didn't make sense. It was so weird. And my biggest problem that I want to just scream like my head off about is why didn't she just tell them the fucking plan? It was like we could have avoided so much unnecessary bullshit. The whole Canto Bite storyline, everything. If she just told everybody the plan, there wouldn't have, even when there was a mutiny, there was a fucking mutiny and she still didn't tell them the plan. Why? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I have no answer for you for that one, but I just, I, that whole, that whole situation with Finn and Rose down on Canto Bite and all this stuff going on there on, in, on the rebel ships, I, I was never really all that interested in, to be honest with you. Right. Um, but it did tie into, it did it, so okay so the I, I i i didn't 
there was things that I liked and didn't like. Okay, so let's talk about. So then, okay, so here's what happens, right? So Leia's floating in space. Now this Admiral Holdo comes in, and she's like, you know, she's like this, you know, f- empowered female who's like, I'm not gonna let this hotshot, you know, man, you know, have his way with me. You know, I'm, I, I have a plan, and you got to trust me, and you know, don't don't have any lip. Like that's kind of the that's kind of what I got from it. You know, it was like, you know, respect your elders, res- you know, whatever. I'm not. I don't have to. I don't owe you anything. I don't owe you an explanation. You know, and I just that really irritated me because it's like you're the fucking resistance you're like a band of freedom fighters like people deserve to know like what the fuck's going on this isn't like a first order hierarchy thing um so anyway so 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 she takes over and then okay where's mon huh where's mon mothma oh she was yeah mon mothma i think she's dead she died and i think return of the jedi right no she didn't she didn't die oh she's old i don't know she's probably dead she's like Leia's age yeah, that's a good question. I don't know, Mon Mothma. I, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where she is, but, um, you know, but, 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 okay, yeah. So here's this. This is where the problems, the problems start arising left and right. So like they, they like Skype into like a Star Wars Battlefront Two game where like Maz Kanata is there, like shooting and, and like that was so dumb. Oh, that was another dumb. What thing. the that was fuck so was dumb. that? Yeah. So dumb. She just has the answer, like, oh, I know who we can ask. Why are you gonna ask her? Did they even know who she was before Harrison, before Han Solo even like connected them? No. In Force. No. Yeah, at that all. was really dumb. They just. Yeah, lame. So lame. That, yeah, totally lame. So then, okay, so yeah, Rose, Finn, they go on this like secret mission, and they go to the casino planet. I thought it was cool. When they got there, I was like, oh, wow, another world. Because that's what I like about Star Wars is the universe, the world. You know, th- that's what I liked about Rogue One. Like the city of Jeddah, the occupied stormtroopers, like the tanks rolling down the streets, like the different cities, Coruscant. Like th- that's what I loved about the prequels too, is like the, all the different worlds and stuff. So I thought we we're going to, you know, we we're going to see this different world. It was pretty cool. It was a little weird, you know, kind of prequely. And um, then. It was. There you go. Prequely. Yeah. The, 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 you, you, you nailed it. It felt like prequely what while Rogue One in the world, I didn't feel that way at all. Right. Rogue One felt because like... they were shot a little, a little dirtier. It looked a little dirtier. They were shot a little more handheld. Uh, I don't think there was quite as many CGI. Not not that I have a problem with CGI, period, but like the Canto Bite felt like, you know, um, those prequel like worlds they go to. I don't know, Camino or something stupid like that. Or that, that diner with like cloners. That yes, yes, diner. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, oh my shit. God. Or is he that? What yeah. are, like what are these people thinking? Like I don't know, it's like Lucas Johnson, like all these guys. Like what are they thinking? Like a fucking fifties style diner with a guy with like ten arms? Like oh Obi Wan, my old friend. Like what the fuck is going on? Like are they just like well, how did they come to these decisions? It's crazy. Yeah, that was stupid. That was so really stupid. Dumb. Well, you know, like you you could have possibly ended up that way with Yoda originally though. Like that could have been that. And they they hit a home run with that one, so they thought, ah, oh, well, you know, we'll just make more weirdos, like yeah. fucking out of this world crazy. Yeah, that's true. I guess it's different from looking. <laughs> it's different looking out, you know, on on it than from creating from within, you know. Um, but but you know what? You know what? Really, I liked a lot was in Revenge of the Sith that opera scene where Anakin meets uh, Palpatine at the opera. They could have done something like that. That was cool, you know. They could have made it look a little bit more like that, you know. Yeah, everyone likes that scene. That's like the only like, good scene in the prequels. And maybe like the fight between Obi Wan and Anakin before they speak, except for the speaking. But, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So okay. Yeah. So we're on Canto Bite. So like, all right. So the the things that I liked about Canto Bite was the political kind of messaging that it was like, look, like this is because, like I said, Ryan Johnson made a decision, and I think he made this decision because. You know he's he's directing a whole new trilogy that has nothing to do with the Skywalker saga. So I think what he's doing is he's setting up stuff for this new trilogy. Like he's setting up new rules and a new you know thing for this whole trilogy. He made the decision to open this movie focusing on the resistance, the rebellion, the sacrifice, the you know the character of Rose was put in there for a specific reason. Like she's like gung-ho resistance, like she can't come from came from like a slave mining town. So they wanted to get all those messages in there. So I think they made an excuse to go to Canto by to get those messages out there. You know, the weapons manufacturers and the rich, the elite, the global elite, you know, that kind of stuff. So I kind of liked that messaging because that's one of the big main things I like about Star Wars is 
you know, the, the freedom fighters versus the, the tyranny, the 1% versus the 99%, that sort of thing. I think that's a cool element to Star Wars. And that's, that's what makes it so, you know, relatable and stuff. And, and, you know, but they just fucked it up. They fucked it up, man. The music and that fucking the code breaker guy. What the fuck was that? Do you remember that scene with the, the red plum bloom and they and they zoom in? It's like a 19 fucking 50s like Cary Grant movie or something. He's like, hey, darling, like not now. Like I'm rolling, lovely. And the music is like, like fucking weird and different. And it just takes you totally out of Star Wars. It's the worst scene I've ever seen in my entire life in a Star Wars movie. It takes you completely out of Star Wars and puts you into some like 1940s like Cary Grant like movie or something it's so weird and then and not even that they don't even like they don't even end up me- talking to that guy and then after being told there's one dude in the whole universe who could do it they benicio is just like no nah, i could do it They're like oh okay the, you know one special code breaker in the entire galaxy but this other guy's like no nah, no nah, i got it and everyone's just like all right I, I mean i guess we'll trust him he stutters like it was the entire like i understand thematically that like you're right well i guess we'll talk about more of like the I don't know, socialism message kind of, or like, you know, universalizing like <laughs> force distribution, wealth distribution message going on there. Yeah. But, and that was, I understand important thematically for that, but the execution of that like, whole entire set piece was so goofy and so stupid. I thought that, uh, yeah, I was, I was a bit, em- I would have been embarrassed to include that in a Star Wars film. Yeah, it was. That makes like, yeah. list and the fucking Maxwell band look, look like elegant. <laughs> you're right yeah yeah, yeah. It, it really is weird it, it, it almost tanked the movie like that that almost ruined the movie for me like between between why didn't holdo tell poe the plan and the canto bite sequence it almost tanked the movie for me but thankfully it was saved because one of my favorite scenes was the introduction to snoke like you know, Kylo Ren comes in, General Hux is leaving. And I like that little relationship they have with Hux and Kylo Ren. And Snoke fucking laces into him and then force lightnings him. And it was, I thought that was great. I, I love that introduction to Snoke. And guess what? I don't give a shit who the fuck Snoke is. I don't care. I don't care. We don't need to know these explanations. I agree with Ryan Johnson. Ryan Johnson said, in the original trilogy, we didn't know who the emperor was. We didn't know. He was just the emperor. He's the big bad guy. You know, we didn't have to know every detail. And then the other thing is, how are we going to have all this exposition? Oh, hi. And hello. I'm Darth Plagueis. Remember me? Like I, you know, Palpatine killed me and now I want revenge or whatever. You know, like we don't have time for that shit. So I li- did you like the introduction of Snoke? What did you think about Snoke? I mean, yeah, I mean, considering what it like, like we talked about before, considering what JJ and the Force Awakens gave Ryan Johnson to work with, yeah, I was happy with the way they executed it. I mean, it's the same dynamic you had with the Emperor Vader and Tarkin. And that's clearly obvious, which was obviously kind of a retreat and yeah. didn't have to be that way. Um, also, I think the mythology of the Sith is always too kind of makes that's probably why people are like. Wait, where did this guy come from? How where did he like how did he appear? Because how, like, you know, who trained him? If there's only two Sith and both the Sith died in Return of the Jedi, like, where did that come from? I think that's a big part of the, the people's curiosity about the origin of Snoke. Right. Um, whether he's an inquisitor or like and also in terms of the first order, I, I don't we, we talked about on the Canto Bite situation, how the people they were all arms dealers, like does the first order have control of the galaxy like the Empire did? I don't think they do. I mean, are there are there independent systems and like rich people like on the Canto Bite that don't have to deal with the in- imperial influence? I think I'm. Um, I think the First Order is like Nazi is like Germany in like 1930. Then what was the Empire? Empire was like Germany in like 1942. Uh, okay. Well, high, yeah, peak. Yeah, peak Empire. Yeah. Um. I don't know. So I, I mean, I understand why people are curious about Snoke, but I do like that they killed him because I don't know. It would have been lame. It just would have been lame if was, that was the, the, the main crux of the trilogy again, which is to kill the evil emperor. I think it does make Kylo Ren more interesting now that he's basically in charge. That was that was one of my favorite scenes in any uh, Star Wars movie. I'm, I'm trying to think. I mean, obviously Luke versus Vader. 
And I don't know, maybe this might be number two or, or number three. I mean, I, I, probably, probably it might be number two for me as my fa- one of my favorite scenes in a Star Wars movie. I mean, it was just, it was so incredible, uh, you know, because it was unexpected. I didn't really know what was going to happen. I didn't know what was going on. Um, so yeah, let's, let's, b- before we dive into that, we'll come back to that, um, that cool ass fucking scene. But I guess let's talk about maybe like Ray on the island and Luke. You know, there's so much to unpack in this fucking movie, right? I mean, it's crazy. And I think that Ryan Johnson really like, you're right. Like, he's like, fuck, J.J. Abrams gave me all this shit, you know, and I'm just going to fucking do, do, he he just tried to do everything. He just crammed so much into this movie. Longest Star Come Wars on. movie ever. Yeah, too much. It felt like, that's why I said I felt exhausted when it ended. I was like, holy shit. I felt like wiped out. It was so much. There was like there were like three climaxes in the movie, um, and um, think about like Empire Strikes Back. It's pretty simplistic, right? You have like the beginning Hoth where everyone's together, and then the whole second act of the movie is just is just two parallel plot lines: uh, Darth Vader chasing after the Millennium Falcon and Luke on Dagobah. That's it, and they meet up again in Cloud City. It's pretty simple. Yeah. I mean, this one had like nineteen thousand things going on. Right. Most yeah. of them, well, not a lot were just really stupid. Most of them went didn't go anywhere. Most of them didn't make sense. Like didn't make sense. Yeah, it was it was it was stupid. So okay, so let's let's let's. So we we kind of you know scattered around a little bit, but let's go back to Octu and Daisy Ridley. Uh, Ray is there, and she's meeting Luke Skywalker, and she hands him the lightsaber. And this is the moment that we've all been waiting for. What did you what did you think about this? I mean, I think it's. It's like a symbol for everything that Ryan Johnson was doing with this movie, like being like everything that you hold sacred to the audience, everything that you think is a big deal isn't. Yeah. I don't know. It was kind of funny. I, I, got, I don't know. Well, here's another thing. Here's another thing that from Force Awakens. How are they going to uh, rectify the fact that this, this idea that the lightsaber was calling to her this whole time? Right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah. And the, you had their voices like Obi-Wan and the Force Vision. You know, the Force Vision, the Knights of Ren, what happened to those guys? You know, is that is that the future? Is that things to come? Like what what what's going on? It was it was very it's very strange. But 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 I think maybe we actually we might have gotten an explanation because when Snoke says darkness rises and light to meet it, like when he when he says that in his throne room, he he's like he's saying the, the, the because the darkness rose with Kylo Ren, he knew that there would be a light side to rise up to. I guess that's, he must know things about the force that we don't know. You know, he, he, I mean, he's supposed to be this ancient evil or whatever. So, you know, maybe that's what happens. Maybe, maybe it's just whoever's heart is true. You know, he's, he even says to Ray, you have the heart of a true Jedi, you know? So maybe just out of random chance, you know, like, like Anakin Skywalker, right? Like, who the fuck was Anakin Skywalker? Like, he was nobody. He was a slave kid from a desert planet. He 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 was yeah, sure. he was he was nothing, you know. So so maybe Ray is like an well, Anakin Skywalker, maybe, you know. Maybe Darth. Remember, they kind of hinted that Darth Plagueis or Palpatine conceived it with the Force. Remember that? That's a, that's another thing. Maybe you know Pal. You know Pal like. Palpatine tells that story about Darth Plagueis, and there's been so much. I I kind of think I'm kind of theorizing. Like we can talk about theories and stuff too about for like where is this going to go. But I'm kind of theorizing that like he is maybe based on the Plagueis type of character. And you know if you think if you think about it, he's different than he's not like the Emperor. You know he wears a gold robe. You know it's it's he's not really like he has these scars. Like where do you get all these scars from? Like what happened to him? So, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of like still mystery there. Maybe he, maybe, maybe, um, you know, maybe he manipulated the force or, or whatever to like, you know, he, he created that force bond, but maybe he's all about like, you know, the balance of the force, light and dark. That seemed to be a, a theme in this movie as well, you know? And he even says like, I didn't know Skywalker to, to be so wise, you know, to, to bring the Jedi to an end. So maybe he's just something, there's a lot, there's still a lot of questions. And I don't think, I kind of don't think that it, it's just, that's it with Snoke. I kind of think that there's some, we're going to get a little something in episode nine to, to see, you know, he might, you know, he might come back, you know, he might come, but we, we have the force ghosts that come back. Maybe he's, he's not a Sith, so maybe he can manipulate him, him himself into some situation. You know, the whole thing about this movie was the Star Wars rules are rewritten. 
So it is kind of like anything goes now, like almost anything can happen because we've seen things happen with the force in this movie that we haven't seen before. So there could be, you know, there could be some kind of coming back. And let's not forget that, uh, you know, people have been maimed and, 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 and brutalized in these movies before specifically Anakin Skywalker was left for dead, mangled and became Darth Vader, came back from the dead, so to speak. Um, you know, Darth Plagueis, uh, the the he was he he knew how to manipulate life and and, and come back from the de- dead and all that stuff and um you know and so so and you know Snoke is all scarred up so maybe he's done this a couple times and if you look he looks different in the Force Awakens than he does in in uh in Last Jedi maybe he's like you know there's there there's a lot of speculating that could be done and and we can go all over the place with this but anyway I, I digress um. You know, so there's you a do lot- like <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so where were we? Okay, so we can we can get back into that Snoke stuff because I want to circle back to that that. But let's talk about the Octu. So Luke throws the lightsaber over his shoulder, right? And so the whole point of this, right? The whole point of him throwing the lightsaber over his shoulder, running away from Rey, telling her to get out of here, you know, being a crazy old man, you know, which is fine by me because Yoda was a crazy old hermit. Obi-Wan was a crazy old hermit. Perfectly fine. I have no problem with him being a crazy old hermit that drinks titty milk from brontosauruses. You know, like, I don't, I don't, I don't care about yeah. that, you know? Um, but I, mean, yeah. I don't mind it. It's like a weirdo, like angry. Um, I guess we know like they had the tragedy with, you know, he, he basically ruined Ben Solo, so he's like a recluse. I mean, I don't. Did, did people really have a problem with that? He's like a weirdo. Yeah, because like, because like everyone, you know. But here's the thing: this is not Luke Skywalker. Luke, Luke, this like isn't. Bitch. Luke always acted like a little bitch. You're right, and yeah, he was always like whiny little turd. He yeah. was never cool. Well, he was kind of yeah. cool in Return of the Jedi when he. You know when he when he said when he threw his lightsaber down and said, "I am a Jedi, like my father. I will not turn." And, you know, he sacrifices himself, so to speak. So that was, that's, I think that's what everybody had a problem with. They said, Luke Skywalker, he's supposed to be this, you know, master Jedi. He, he confronted his father. He confronted the emperor. He threw down his lightsaber and said, I won't fight. Like he, 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 he did all this stuff and he, and he saw the good in his father. And Ray even brings this up in the movie. She says, you saw the good in Darth Vader and, and you tried to, you know, turn him to the light. So why, that begs the question, why the fuck would, would th- that guy go and murder his nephew? You know what I mean? Like, that, that, that just, that was a problem for me. That I actually was, like that. I, I like that twist. I thought that was interesting, to be honest with you. Eh. I thought that gave it some complexity. I mean, I could see why he would do that. I mean, he's a little fucking scarred. Like, his, his father turns to the dark side. You know that's possible. He flirted with the dark side. He right. sees this kid. I mean, he, I don't think he was actually going to do it, but he was... He overreacted for sure in a bad moment, and we and we know he can overreact. Like he overreacts when Darth Vader threatens Leia and Jedi. That's a good. I mean, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I actually thought that was an interesting, like an interesting twist because it also gives you a little sympathy for you know Kylo Ren because he felt betrayed, right? And it gives him a little more complexity to Luke. Like he's not just this all good guy. I mean, like he fucked up. And it's right. his fault. That's, and that's why he's, you know, in exile. Yeah, no, I think, yeah, that's, that's, that's true. I mean, that, that, I think- that was, that was a big point of the movie too. It was like failure, you know, making mistakes, learning from our mistakes, learning from failure. And another big point of the movie in this is they told that story three times in those three flashback scenes. And it was three different versions because it was from three different perspectives. And this is where it connects. And this is where, you know, some of the fans are upset with this and say, oh, it doesn't really fit the character. But you're right. It does. You're right. It does fit the character. Because if you think about it, all the Skywalkers are fucked except for Luke. And Luke is the one that actually made it out, you know, pretty much unscathed. Like he's, he's, you know, that Skywalker blood is like, you know, could go dark at any time. And he actually did the most good with the Skywalker blood. So if you think about it from that perspective, but that's an, that, but then that brings up the perspective. And if you, I, I just recently watched Return of the Jedi, after Luke goes to meet with Yoda, 
and Yoda dies, he sees Obi-Wan and Obi-Wan, he goes, why didn't you tell me? And he goes, well, I did tell you from a certain point of view. And then Obi-Wan says, uh, and I wrote it down. Because- oh, we know. We all know at this point that George Lucas had no idea about the father, about Darth Vader being his father in the original. And that's why he kind of had to like get his way, get his way around that. But point. it's still, that's but it's a- still in the story though. It's still, it's, he, they still twisted it to fit the story and that, and that, yeah. tw- that twisting to fit the story is, is is part of Star Wars now. So that becomes a theme for this movie. Ryan Johnson used that as a theme for this movie. Truth from a certain point of view. Obi-Wan says, you realize, Luke, many of the truths we cling to depend greatly on our own point of view. So from Kylo Ren's point of view, he thought his master had betrayed him, tried to kill him in his sleep. From Luke's point of view, I, I had a moment. I, I felt shame. You know, from Ray's point of view, she thinks she can, you know, save it. So there's a lot of different, you know, the points of view here that I think is a is another good theme of the movie is like, wh- what is true? What is real? Well, it depends. There's a lot of different points of view on that, you know. Yeah, it's, like a, it's a kind of like a real Rashomon type little thing there. <sighs> Rashomon. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I mean, cool. Yeah, I mean, I was, I like it. I mean, obviously, Kylo Ren felt like Luke was going to murder his ass. Um, I, I'd be a little upset too. I don't know. What, what are you, you going to do? Yeah. If like, like you, if Phil just walked in. <laughs> Phil's yeah. Yeah. This happened. We, 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 Sal probably tried to kill you multiple times. Uh, Michael, I sense the darkness rising in you. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Well, yeah, you know, that, 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 that is a good, I kind of thought that they were going to do something like that. Like my prediction was, that I thought the big twist was going to be that it was Luke that accidentally burned down his Jedi Academy or something like that because he was like testing out dark side powers or something. But that, you know, that was just my, you know, fan speculation theory, whatever. But, but, but a lot of people wanted to see a strong Luke Skywalker, powerful, doing all, you know, crushing ATATs with his, with the force and doing that stuff. But you know what? Ryan Johnson took it in a different direction and he actually made it really good because a lot of the messages were like, look, this, these guys aren't legends. They're human beings too. They're, they're not, they're not like these gods. They're, they're flawed characters. They make mistakes. And I thought that was a good, you know, a good choice, a good, uh, a good part of the movie. what did you think about the, any, well, do you have anything else to add about the, the Luke's, the way they handled Luke and his decision and the reason why Ben turned? No, I, I like I said, I liked that. I thought it's probably the best possible reason that, that that explained it um yeah. actually but didn't they say somewhere that snoke already has started to like get to him like what does that mean like was he there like, did he like visit was he like was he like creeping at a mall and was like hey ben come here i got candy like i don't understand what the hell is the fuck does that mean like, <laughs> yeah snoke is like intergalactic pedophile um <laughs> yeah just hey over here kid check out these puppies dark side puppies wow like i don't understand how was he already communicating with him like through his mind so apparent. So okay. So the 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 little bit that we know about Snoke is that he's really old. He's like from far away, or so, or, or something like that. I think like you know he's he's because but he's 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 seen the Empire rise and fall. I think this was in like the Star Wars visual visual dictionary. It says that he's been around and he's seen the rise and fall of the Jedi. He's like very ancient and and, and stuff like that. So it's like okay. So where was he? Okay. So then maybe he was out in the outer rim or something or whatever. But he mentions it when the when we first meet Snoke in the flesh in this one, he says to him, "You're no Vader, you know. You're just a child in a mask." And it's like, okay, so he knows Darth Vader. So like he must. So he knows Darth Vader. He's seen the Empire rise and fall. So uh, when when Ben Solo is born, it's another Skywalker blood. So he probably thinks. Great, like this, the 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 you know, Prince of Darkness, Darth Vader's grandson. I'll have a chance to get him at a young age and and twist him and turn him, you know. And he probably communicated him with you know through the Force, you know. I've heard so. I heard some people online say that he was one of those creep creeps that was like on Palpatine's like little little committee there in Jedi. Nah, I don't, I don't think so. I, I I don't think he's one of those creeps. I think he's. I I think that he's something that's okay. So there's a theory that's going around on the internet right now. This is a hot one. This is a hot take. So in the movie, in on Oct two, there's a symbol that's in the ground, and you don't really see it in the movie. But this is what these nerds do these days: is they tear apart every little thing. And in the Star Wars, in the pool? yeah, in the pool, in the Star Wars visual dictionary, it says 
the image in the pool in Octu is an image of the 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 first uh the prime jedi it says it says the prime jedi the first of his order sitting in a meditation pose and he's and he's balancing the light and the dark it's like a yin yang black and white and the figure kind of looks like snoke a little bit it has like an alien kind of head and it says the prime jedi the first of his order so there's a theory floating around that snoke is the first jedi and that's why he's like so old and he can cheat death. And, you know, they're, st- they're taking a little bit from this prime Jedi concept and they're taking a little bit from this Plagueis concept and they're making something totally new with Snoke. And so, you know, there's a, there's a lot of theories that are going around right now. But who the fuck knows? Nobody knows. All we know is that he's this big, bad, evil guy who got to Ben Solo and Luke sensed the darkness rising. And for a moment, he tried to murder his fucking nephew. And then Ben Solo feels like abandoned because his parents left him, I guess. You know, so he, you know, and, and that's where the connection with Ray happens. So he's connecting with Ray. What did you think about this force Skype? Like, what did you, how did you feel about that? Sliding to the force DMs. Yeah, sliding um, into the force DMs. Yeah. Um, it was in- it was interesting. I-, I mean, I like Adam Driver is just like a really good actor. So anytime he's doing anything, I- I'm just into it. Like yeah. he's by far the best actor. He's the best actor on Girls. He's the best actor in this. Best actor um, in the Star Wars so- franchise. Well, Alec Guinness is up there, right? Yeah, I guess. Fine, Alec Guinness, whatever. You know, bridge over river choir, or like you know, there. girls. Yeah. <laughs> well, but but Adam Driver. Okay, Adam Driver is a very good actor, and you know, Daisy Ridley's a pretty good actor too, actress. You know, so yeah, she, she's got. I like that dynamic. I mean, they kind of like it was like a little bit of a will they, won't they type like friendship thing. I don't know. I I, I liked it. I thought it was cool. Yeah, I liked it too. Um, I, I liked when Luke like barged in on them, like touching. It was like. It was like a parent, like coming in, like you know, while, while catching you, like having sex or something. You know, it's like no, like, they were sex. They were sexting. Yeah, yeah, for sexting. Yeah, yeah. He, she even he was yeah his shirt off. He, even you know he was sending nudes. It was weird, but yeah. um, yeah. I mean, obviously, there's some like connection there. They kind of like have some attraction to each other. Um, well, but then. Remember in Force Awakens at one point he's like, I know you. Where do I know you from? Like there was clearly supposed to be some more like meaning to that whole thing. I don't know. I yeah, guess we'll find out. In- you're right in- about nine. that because I listened to the audio book on Audible, uh, the Force Awakens audio book. And in the audio book, in the forest duel, uh, you know, when, when she commands the lightsaber to her, he, he looks, he turns at her and, and Kylo Ren says, it is you. So... What the fuck is that? So that's okay. So that's a, that goes back to this other message of truth from a certain point of view, right? Because Kylo Ren says, Ray, I know who your parents are. And I believe that when he's saying that to her in the elevator, when they're going up to Snoke's throne room, he's saying that because he knows that she will, uh, you know, fight by his side because she wants to keep him alive, you know, cause so she, so she can find out who her parents are because she cares so much. So that's why I think he uses her to that, to that way. And who knows, maybe, maybe he is lying to her about, you know, her parents being, you know, drunks and, and leaving her in the Jakku desert. We don't know. And I think some of the people that worked on the last Jedi said, Kylo Ren thinks that he's telling her the truth from his perspective or something like that. So, and then the other thing is, the force visions are not totally clear, right? Like we don't know, like Snoke obviously got it wrong and he's one of the most powerful people to use the force. He, he thought he was like, you know, he, he, he missed, got, he got that whole situation wrong about uh, Kylo Ren striking down his true enemy. So it's the force visions aren't totally clear, you know? So, um, so yeah, I thought that so was, we're going to take a flashback. We're going to take a flashback of like people, like people like bums on Jakku drinking and like, we're going to like review, be able to really like Obi Wan or something in disguise. He's gonna wink at the camera and be like, "Ah, gotcha." Like, what do you mean? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I really, I really don't know. I mean, that's you know, I wonder, I wonder how J.J. Abrams feels now. You know, it's like you know, J.J. Abrams handed Ryan Johnson off his thing, and Ryan Johnson was like, "Okay, J.J." I'll, I, I see your your conservative safe Force Awakens, and I raise you this fucking fit crazy thing. And now J.J. Abrams is probably like, "What the fuck am I going to do with this?" Like, what's J.J. Abrams going to do? 
I think J.J. Abrams is kind of like a bitch. Like he's probably going to count. He's probably going to like bitch out to the fans and like give us what we want. And I kind of would I would be happy with that. You know, would, would you? What do you think? Well, you know, he originally wasn't supposed to direct episode nine. Uh, Colin Trevor or whatever, the Jurassic World guy. Yeah, but they had, they, had, they had disagreements. Yeah. I want now I'm wondering what those were because. You know, episode like, Last Jedi ends pretty open ended. Like that could go to a lot of different directions. I wonder what those disagreements were about. It could be, it could be anything, really. Yeah, it I, could be. Uh, they, Disney was like, "Let's go safer," and he was like, "Nah, let's go, let's go even crazier," or, or the opposite. I don't know. Well, you got to remember, like, okay, so Disney's a behemoth. They just acquired fucking Fox. Like they're 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 fucking monstrous. And Kathleen Kennedy definitely has an agenda you know with the strong female leads and you know these these sorts of things and the certain kinds of messages that she wants to put in the film and i heard that basically kathleen kennedy and and lucasfilm were basically just like these are the points that we want to hit in this move like we want to hit these things in the movie and Ryan, and they were like ryan johnson you can do your movie however you want but you got to make sure that you hit these like certain points so that's what i heard i heard that was the same way it was the same thing for force awakens and it was just like we have like basically we have an agenda because there's been problems on every single Star Wars production. There was problems on Rogue One. They had to have reshoots. There was problems with the Han Solo movie. Um, they, I think they fired the director, right? They fired the writers or directors yeah. and they got Ron Howard and said so they're getting people who will kind of like toe the Disney line. You know, it's Disney. You know, at the end of the day, Disney it has a certain kind of uh, way that they want to do things, you know? So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I I have faith. I, I'm not going to have high hopes. Like I had, I had so like my, my hopes were so high for last Jedi because I just, I loved looper and brick and Ryan Johnson seemed like a, like a cool kind of nerdy hip guy who like understood star Wars and was with it and got sci-fi and got, had him tell a cool story in a unique way. So my hopes were up like really high. That being said, like the last Jedi was not what I was expecting, but I still liked it. You know, it was, it was weird. It was, I was like totally not what I expected, but, I, but, but what I was expecting, but I still, I still liked expecting? it. I was expecting. I was expecting more Force Awakens type of stuff. I was expecting more like I really I really thought that they were going to play it a little bit more safe. I thought they were going to kind of mimic Empire and I was going to be okay with that. You know, because because you like you 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 actually had a really funny tweet about The Force Awakens. Do you remember what it was? No. You you said something like uh, you know, seeing seeing this, I think you, I think this was you. You were like, Force Awakens was kind of like having sex with an with an ex girlfriend, like as comfortable. Oh, you know, oh yeah, like, that was me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it was like it's like yeah. you know, it's 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 good. It, it's nice. It's familiar. You know, and at the end of the day, people like that kind of stuff. You know, people 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 do like you know, nice and familiar and stuff because the Last Jedi really, and I think that's why I'm talking about this movie so much is because it just was so unexpected, and I'm such a huge Star Wars fan, so it really kind of you know blew the lid off a lot of things um i thought it was gonna be darker to be honest with you based it was on pretty dark like though. i uh, not really a lot of people like, died. Here's... who people it's not as dark as empire empire is darker well empire is darker because you know your fucking father chops your hand off your best friend betrays yeah. you i mean nothing is look you said this, I think, before too. Nothing is ever going to come close to being what Empire was. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Well, the consensus best Star Wars is pretty damn dark. So I don't know why they're afraid to go that dark. It's not like little kids aren't going to buy the toys if there's some kind of you know heavy plot lines. I don't think I don't it's. I don't, just afraid. This was. I think this movie was pretty dark, and this movie had some adult, very adult themes, and it was very dark. And. You know, I just think that I don't think they're afraid to go dark. I think that they just can't replicate what Empire was like. They can't replicate the suspense and the dynamics and the dark. You know, they just can't. You just can't. It's just it. That is what it is. And it's, it'll never you'll never be able to make anything like that ever again. You know, but you know, if, if they want to be if they wanted to have some guts, they could have done something really crazy. Like maybe Ray does join Kylo Ren at the end of the movie. She's like getting down with the dark side. Like that would have been an interesting move. Yeah, that, that would have been an interesting cliffhanger. I think, yeah, I think that could have happened if there was, and look, there that might happen, right? Like because 
one of the thi- one of the things that I think is is this movie is trying to, like I don't know I don't know where they're going to go with episode nine I don't know if they're going to go Kylo Ren is the big bad and he just needs to die or you know it, you know if they're going to go traditional kind of like victory for the heroes route or if they're going to go sympathy for Kylo Ren and he needs to be redeemed because Ray's in love with him or something like that like I don't I don't know you know because I've heard I've heard some theories about people talking about how. You know, this the 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 original Star Wars trilogy is the hero's journey gone right, Luke Skywalker. The 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 prequel trilogy is the hero's journey gone wrong. Uh for the and it's both been for men. And now this is a female and the female's hero's journey, the mythological monomyth hero, the the quest of the hero. The male quest is to slay the dragon, get the gold, and you know, win the princess. That's the the grandest story of all time. And with a female, what is it? What's their myth? What's their hero arc? Uh, their hero arc is the re- redeeming the man, making the, like Beauty and the Beast. That's the ultimate uh, you know, female mythology. And throughout The Force Awakens and this movie, Kylo Ren is referred to as a beast, a monster, a creature in a mask, you know, these sorts of things. So maybe they will go that way, maybe not. Maybe they'll just say that he's like this, you know, privileged white man who is like a Columbine mass shooter kind of guy who's just crazy and he needs to die. You know, who knows? I th- I, I'm pretty sure he's going to die. I'm fairly confident that one way or the other, Kyle, even if he gets redeemed ahead of time, Kyle Ren is not going to survive episode nine. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, you can't. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. Like, live out his, like, live out his days somewhere just being like, you know, like, he's a murderer. I mean, no one's going to be like... Even if he survives, everyone's going to be like, oh, yeah, he's cool. He, 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 we forgive him. Well, maybe if he, like, uh, you know, if he goes and, like, saves all the porgs or something, instead of grilling them like Chewy, maybe people will like him. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Well, I tell you, I, 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 apparently Carrie Fisher would have had a huge, big part in episode nine. Maybe there would have been, like, some mother-son situation going on there. Right. Yeah. But now we're not, now not going to get that unless they, like, CGI her ass. Yeah, I mean, the another big theme of this movie was killing the past. Like that was Kylo Ren's message. It was funny because Kylo Ren's message was, you know, like Ray, kill the past, let it go, you know, let let the past die. And that was also funny enough. That was also Luke's message too. And Yoda, they were like, mm, burn the books, like let the past die. Like we don't need, you know, the move on from from what what's going on. So it was funny that actually both sides of the light and the dark were in agreement with burn down the past let it let it go and start new you know that was that was it that was pretty interesting did you like yoda i thought he was a little goofy like <laughs> he didn't have, why, why did they make this never more like empire strikes back or like return the jedi yoda where he's like pretty chill they they made yeah they made i i liked him i, I gotta say I, I did like him because um obviously yoda's like super powerful he made a lightning bolt strike the tree which and he's a force ghost and he also hit luke on the head with a wooden stick so like i don't know he's just like a really powerful force ghost now you know so there it was it's really interesting he's the most powerful of all the jedi yoda so i he's like having he's like one of those like like you know when he, the, the wise chief, you know, who kind of like jokes around and, and the Zen master, the Zen master who jokes and fucks with the student. You know, I kind of I like that. I like that about Yoda. Yeah, I mean, I like that, too. I just thought he was a little like his voice sounded a little weird, a little different. I mean, Frank Oz is getting older, I guess. That's what. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Fuck Frank Oz for getting older. Piece of shit. You ruined my yeah. childhood. You ruined my fucking childhood. That that's a, like it's amazing how many people are like going off. They they Disney fucking took a huge shit on Star Wars. They ruined my childhood. They fucking made Luke a weak beta male. Like there's all these people that are like losing their mind about what they did. And I you know I just think that the expectations are just too too much. You can't please everybody, and all these fans are just like you know it's it, like come on, you, you can't. You're, you what do you what do you expect? Ugh. What do they? I don't I don't understand what they wanted. They wanted. I mean, the movie. Had, co- they wanted the comfort. Movie the, the movie had what? I mean, the movie has problems. It has pacing problems. It has structure problems. It has a lot of that. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, I think overall it hits some good notes with the main character, with like the, the main Skywalker solo plotline. Had some cool stuff going on there. 
Definitely. I mean, look at how like it's been an hour already. We're talking about this fucking movie, and you know, I've seen it three times now, and um, three? yeah, I saw it three times in theaters. Yeah. Jesus. Well, you know, I went. I went during the day, and if you go, if you go to the eleven a.m. show, it's like seven dollars, and it's just you know, why not? Why the fuck not? You know, I really, it was really. I'm obsessed with Star Wars, man. Like, this is the only... Star Wars is the only thing that I really nerd out about. I don't really nerd out too much about anything else. Star Wars is it for me. Well, I, like I, psychedelics, apparently. Well, yeah, but but you know what? That's why... I mean, psychedelics, to me, you know, play... Uh, it, it kind of are a reason why I feel linked to Star Wars. I feel like there is some kind of parallels between a psychedelic, kind of meditative, spiritual position and also using you know the force it's like a very kind of similar sort of thing and that's i think that's why i I like it so much it's it's cool i mean obviously obviously it's not the same thing but it's it's cool like when luke projects himself at the end like that's something called astral projection that's that's like remote viewing what they what they in stranger things like the the cia actually conducted experiments with people in with taking lsd and float tanks to that, that's what that movie, The Men Who Stare at Goats, was about. It was a based on true events of trying to remote view so he can steal that movie secrets. Was so bad, I know it was horrible, but it was based on a true story, and it was and it was um, it's all about remote viewing. So I really liked I liked that element a lot. That that was by the way. All right, so let's talk about. I, I mean, I think we, we we. Do you have anything else to say about the middle of the movie, or should we just jump jump straight to the end? We can jump straight to the end, but I mean, your connection with psychedelics and Star Wars is is, is quite the thing. Are you going to go on like a ayahuasca retreat to Dagobah or something? Well, I, yeah, I, I am actually. I'm going to Peru soon, so yeah. Okay. Um. Well, yeah, because it it it's it it really is like when you enter into the re- the psychedelic realm, you're entering into a realm where uh the rules of normal reality aren't there. So it, it 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 and and the feeling that you have is very at least this is my interpretation of it you know this is my perspective so from my from my perspective it fits and I and I like it you know I see Yoda as kind of like a Zen master kind of shaman guy you know there's a lot of similarities <laughs> obviously Star Wars is based off of that the old wise you know samurai type you know Zen Buddhist you know the pacifist Buddhist people sort of thing and um, I mean so. it's very religious I mean it's, the Force is God. I mean, it's a religion. It, they call it's the Jedi religion. It's a very spiritual thing. Well, yeah, and and but that's why. But in this movie, that I liked how they actually good point to bring that up before we jump right to the end. Uh, Luke says the Force doesn't. The Jedi don't own it, and I love that because it's like, look, like. There's a lot of fucked up shit that happens in the name of religion, right? Like the the Muslims think that they're right, the Jewish people think they're right, the Christian people think they're right, the you know they the, there's all kinds of people think they're right, their texts are right, and these, these sorts of things. You know, it's it's there's this dogma that comes along with religion, but it's like you don't have to buy into a religion to be a part of something special. And I kind of liked that message that it, it that it was the force can be for anyone. That was really cool. And, you know, they, they were tearing down because he made a good point. You know, the, 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 the Jedi let Darth Sidious rule, right, come to rule right under his nose, and they trained Darth Vader, you know? And that was, I thought that was cool how he brought up Darth Sidious. You know, he said Darth Sidious uh, instead of Emperor Palpatine. You, that was, I, it felt weird to me, to be honest with you. It was a connection, though. I like that connection because the prequels are Star Wars. You know, as much as we shit on the prequels, the prequels spawned a lot of really cool shit. The Clone Wars, you know, uh, the co- like comic books, the fucking um, uh, Rebels TV series and stuff. Like the, the 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 prequels opened up the whole a whole new world of Star Wars. I think a lot of people forget about that. You know, as much as much as like the Attack of the Clones sucked or or the phantom menace sucked or whatever it really opened up the star wars universe a lot and showed us new things that we've never seen before so we can't forget about that as being a part of star wars yeah right, fine but they could have just been so much better they could have done that and just been so much better i, I mean, know. everyone knows that <laughs> i of course you're, 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 you're a prequel apologist you're an apologist you're a lucas apologist <laughs> <laughs> yeah, poor Lucas. He's like this passion that he like, you know, 
He fucking it, it, what, it, what a bunch of bullshit where he's like, well, the pre- prequels are the way they are because they're for children. Oh, they're for children? Then how can we have the fucking open the movie with trade negotiation between Asian aliens and a fucking blockade and all this crazy shit? What are you talking about, Lucas? <laughs> Get your head out of your yeah. ass, you fucking turkey neck. He, he, he's past his prime. He lost it. He did lose it. Yeah, he did. He did. Um, but you know what? I did watch Phantom Menace recently, and, you know, the 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 young Anakin thing, eh, maybe it wasn't that bad. Maybe it wasn't that bad, you know? Maybe it wasn't that bad because, you know, in this movie, Ryan Johnson is connecting that with the young slave kids who are, you know, he wear, he's wearing the resistance ring. He uses the force. He's a nobody. There's hope. That's what Star Wars is about. It's about hope. It's about, you know, f- freedom and, and inspiration. So yeah, I, I like that. Yeah. That a lot. I like the ending a lot. I mean, I like that you don't, again, like you don't have to be you know, some royalty, like a Skywalker to, you know, be part of a rebellion. I mean, that was really cool. I thought that was a good ending. Oh, shit. Did we talk about the, we didn't talk about the throne. Let's talk about the throne room and Snoke's death real quick. All right, go. We talked about that. We did? Yeah. That was just so dope. That fucking, when, when, when he's, the lightsaber cuts through him and then it flies in the air and Ray catches it and it goes into slow-mo and the music slows down and then they, the Praetorian guards and they face off again. That was that was sick. That was really sick. That was one of the coolest scenes ever. Yes. All right, cool. All right, let's so- so- talk about the, how like he had that image in his head for that scene from like the beginning, and he like nailed. He says like we nailed that. And I'm really happy about that. But, yeah, that scene was awesome. Yeah, it was sick. I was like, that's it. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, when this move, the whole speculation about this movie, this movie was so hyped, you know, because because really this because The Force Awakens was so safe and similar that this was really like the real new this is the real new trilogy movie. You know, so this is why everybody was getting so hyped about it. And and you would hear interviews and Daisy Ridley and, you know, Ryan Johnson and you know these guys and Daisy Louie would say, you know, he wrote a script that's very different and unexpected, but right. And, you know, the whole time everyone's like, what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, this is what it means. And so, yeah, so they, they, you know, fucking Captain Phasma comes back for like two seconds. Who gives a shit? See, she sucks. I don't see what the big deal about her is too many fucking characters. Like, you know, they could have done away with Rose and Phasma and Holdo. I mean, put Poe and Finn together, have them go on a mission, you know, that whatever it was just stupid. I didn't like what the, all this stuff. So then, okay. So we go to create, and they're on the mineral planet, which is pretty much Hoth 2.0, you know, kind of, kind of, kind of lame. Like, you know, do something a little bit different. You know, why, why couldn't it be like a jungle or like, you know, like a savanna or something? You know, why, why does it to be like a Hoth situation? You know? Um, well, I mean, they even had the guy, they even had that one guy like purposely go, oh, it's salt, not snow guys. Don't worry. It's not snow. <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah. Salt here. Completely different thing. Yeah, that's right. That's Original. Funny. Why did they do that? It's so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so yeah. Oh, pepper. I you know what I, you know what I have a pet peeve. I hate when um in Star Wars when they make comments that are clearly based in like Earth stuff. Like um, Admiral Holdo says, "God speed." Like what God? What are you talking about? What you don't have? You know you don't, you don't have God there. Yeah. Or in um Empire when the Millennium Falcon's not working and. And uh, Leia's like, you want me to get, get out and push? Like, wh- what do you mean? It's like a 73 pintail. You have to get push it for the transmission. Like, what are you talking about? You <laughs> push stars. You push star fucking ships. What are you, what are you referencing there? That's just right. a little pet peeve I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they had something like that. Well, I think Poe did that when he's like, yeah, holding for Hux. Like, something like that. Um, yeah, like, like, there's like operators and there's like, like phone lines. Yeah, which is, it's funny because you would think that like with all the advanced technology that they have in the Star Wars universe, that they would have like cell phones and they would have like TVs and like news. Like I thought that was one of the things I thought would be interesting would be um, to have like a Finn plot where look, he's like, if you want to get Phasma involved, have her, you know, get her revenge on Finn and th- put up like posters all over the galaxy, like traitor to the first order, like turn him in for a reward and have like a bounty hunter thing, you know, sh- him or chasing him down or whatever, because that would have been kind of cool, you know, to see something like that. Like, they were first order is missing like that propaganda element that they do really really well in Star Wars Rebels. Star Wars Rebels they do like they do the occupation of with the empire and the propaganda and the all that kind of stuff really well. So where but, can I watch that? I don't I've never seen it. Oh, Star Wars Rebels is amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. You got to you got to watch it. It's so good. Um I think you could watch it on 
Hulu, I want to say, maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure. But it's it's out there. You can you can get it. Star Wars Rebels is very good. It's you know, it's like I'm not a cartoon person really, but you know, I do I mean I do like Rick and Morty, The Simpsons, South Park. I guess I am a cartoon person. Fuck me, whatever. But but Rebels is no. Rebels is great. Rebels is really great. Um, yeah, I'll check it out. I've heard it's yeah, it's worth it. Like Clone Wars seemed a little goofy to me, but this is this is like good. Rebels is very good. It's a whole new like it's a team kind of situation. They're like uh it's a good good group of people. It's actually the 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 furry like alien guy is the original concept art for who Chewbacca was supposed to be from the Ralph McQuarrie uh paintings that that George Lucas used to sell Star Wars based on. Um all right, so then so yeah, so so let's let's finish this thing up. It's been a little over an hour now, and uh, almost as long as the well, no, we're halfway point to the movie. The movie was like three hours long, but basically, okay. So they're at crate, and you know there was some stupid stuff that happened there. You know, stupid Rose and Finn thing. I mean, I don't know, whatever. That was stupid. And then Ray comes out of nowhere on the Falcon, and she's like, "Oh, I like this pot now." Like you know, just back to like cheery kind of Force Awakens ish Ray. And then their rebels are in the base and there's like, what, like seven of them left? Like their whole, they started off the movie with like 500, 600 rebels. And now there's only like seven of them. And, and, you know, Poe finally learns like, oh, okay. Like, I guess we can't really sacrifice any more of us because there'll there'll only be like one of us left. He's like, no, we're the spark. You know? Yeah, of course you're, you're, you're it. That's it. Like you gotta get the fuck out of there. You gotta survive. And so when yeah, he's a moron. No, I don't like him. I don't like him. I don't like him one bit. I'm done with him. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he needs, done with to, he needs to die, but he won't. He'll probably, you know, he'll probably stick around. I don't know. I, well, he's going to supposedly he's yeah. going to he's taking over for Princess Leia. That was the whole point. Like she's grooming him for leadership. You know, that was the whole thing, you know. So I guess he'll play a, a, a part like that in nine. Like he'll be the the new commander. Right. Sure, I guess. Whatever. He's he's a moron. Yeah. I don't Oscar, like him. Oscar Isaac. Um I mean I like Oscar Isaac as an actor, but I don't like him in, in Star Wars that much. He, he's he's weird. He's weird. He's always like, Hey Finn, hey buddy, all right, like, oh let's let's go, let's do it. Yeah, um, he's like, Oh, come on, BB eight, yeah. Like go back to Lou and Davis. Yeah. They should do a crossover inside the Amber. We just like singing folk songs about BB eight. Inside Poe Machina. Yeah. Oh yeah, he was good in that too. I forgot he was about great. that. Great, he was great in that. Um, yeah, he's good with like darker, sad, yeah, sad characters. He's I don't buy him as like, all right, guys, we're gonna do this. It's gonna be great. Yeah, yeah, not really into it. Um, okay, yeah. So the end. So they're fucked. You know, it's all over. And then all of a sudden, some this music cues out of nowhere. A hooded figure appears, and we're like, what? How did the fuck did Luke Skywalker get here? And, and he got a haircut. And he got it. Yeah, I shouldn't have stopped for that haircut. <laughs> yeah, he, a, he he stopped for a quick, you know, shape up somewhere. Yeah, that was from the monorail episode with the Simpsons with the scientist. Oh no! Yeah, we're, I know. We're but... too late. I shouldn't have stopped for that haircut. Um, yeah. Maybe so weird, like creatures on the island gave him a haircut that looked like they're straight out of like the Dark Crystal or Labyrinth. Yeah, 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 yeah. The 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 caretakers. So. So yeah, I, so I, um, I, I remember, you know, when this happened, Luke comes out, I remember thinking something's going on here. I'm not quite sh- exactly sure what's going on, but I, I, I was like, something's weird about what's happening here. Uh, and I, you know, it, I wasn't, I wasn't like totally blown away, but I was like, oh wow, that was interesting how they did that because I knew something was up. His beard was darker. His hair was shorter. Something was weird. And um, yeah, so I I really liked that end. I thought that whole ending was perfect. I thought everything he said was amazing. There was a callback when Kylo Ren is he's he's facing off with Kylo Ren, and he goes, "I I'll destroy her. The rebellion will be over, and then I will kill you, the Last Jedi." And Luke had said to Rey earlier in the movie when she when he asked her about the Force, "What do you know about the Force?" And then she tells him it's like moving rocks or whatever, and he's like, "Everything you said about that sentence is wrong." And then he says that to Kylo Ren. Everything you said about that was that's that everything that you just said was wrong. The rebellion is born today. The war has just begun, and I am not the last Jedi. And then we see Ray moving the rocks, and that's another callback to moving rocks. And then the resistance comes out, and they board the Millennium Falcon. I thought that was amazing. 
absolutely amazing. Yeah, I mean, I like the ending a lot. I like like the hope, like you know, the small band of hope type thing there at the end. Did you notice that the Jedi texts are in the Millennium Falcon at the end? I did. Yeah, I didn't notice that the first time. Actually, I had I watched the video and someone someone said that, so I I kept an eye out for that. Yeah, yeah. So and I guess Yoda knew that. Otherwise, he'd just be like a Nazi burning books. <laughs> Yeah, Yoda the book burner. <laughs> Skywalker. Much to learn. Still have. <laughs> what yeah. do you mean? I'm, de- I'm, I'm dead, Yoda. I'm dead. <laughs> mm, dead, dead you is are. It failure? Is it failure is a good lesson? Pretty much the opposite of do or do not? Yeah, kind, kind of. of. But I mean, I guess he learned, you know, more stuff being a force ghost. Failure was the theme of the movie. It was everything was failure. Everything was Cho- bad choices being made, p- truth from a different perspective, sacrifice for a greater good, learning from your mistakes. It was, God, there was just so much fucking shit in this movie. And that's why that's why I'm saying when it ended, I felt overwhelmed. Like, they could have cut the fucking goddamn Admiral Holdo and the Canto Bite shit out of the fucking movie, and it would have been way better. It would have been tighter. It would have been shorter. It would have been more fun. Yeah, and I- it was like a ha- half hour too long. Yeah. Easy. It was. It was a half hour too long. Yeah. Yep. All right. Any conclusions, predictions, thoughts? Yeah. I mean, I have no idea where the new next one is going, which I think is a good thing, actually. Yeah. No idea. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I clearly Kylo Ren is in charge of the First Order, and Ray is going to become a Jedi, or at least get there. And there's a bunch of, like, you know, Little poor kid Jedi's. <laughs> I don't know where. I guess. Um, <laughs> poor, like but I have t- Tom. I, uh, what is it? Charles Dickens Jedi's. Like, mommy, I am a Jedi. Oh yeah, a lot of Oliver Twist. It's like a yeah, little white Oliver trash Twist. Jedi. <laughs> yeah, trailer park Jedi's. Um, but I, I have no idea beyond that. I mean, I, the only thing I do know is that when it comes out, I'll be there to see it the first day because I don't have a choice. And you know, that's that's it. I'm, I'm excited for the solo movie. I just. I think they should do more spin-off movies because I mean I thought Rogue One is really good. Yeah, so. Rogue One was good, but I I think a lot of people like said that they didn't like that one of their problems with it was that like it wasn't like so uh in the Star Wars mythology. Like, you know, when you go to see a Star Wars movie, you want to see like lightsabers and shit. And this was just kind of and then the other thing was like we knew what was gonna happen. They all die. But anyway, I agree with you. I thought it was a good movie too. So what? I mean, you watch World War II movies, you know how it's going to end. Yeah. All um, right. Well, I think this concludes it. Good talk. May the force be with you. May the force be with you. Always. <laughs>